This video explains how to use the paste and paste zero functions in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you several examples and in the first example in line two of the code, I am showing the basic application of the paste function. So in this line of code, I'm specifying the paste function. And then within the paste function, I'm specifying different character strings and numbers. And I'm separating these character strings and numbers by commas. So if you run line two of the code, you can see that the content within the paste function is printed to the bottom in the RStudio console as a single character string. So we have concatenated all the character strings and values within the paste function to a single character string. You can also see that the separator between these values and character strings within the paste function is a blank. So we can change the separator within the paste function, as you can see in lines four and five. And we can do that by specifying the sep argument, as you can see in line five of the code. And in this case, I'm setting the sep argument to be equal to several underscores. So if you run lines four and five of the code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that another output is returned. And this time we have again created a character string. However, the separator for the values and character strings that we have specified within the paste function is an underscore. Similar to that, we can also use an empty character string as separator, as you can see in line seven of the code. So if you run line seven of the code, you can see another character string at the bottom in the RStudio console. And this time we have not used any separator at all. And the R programming language provides an alternative function, which is a convenience function for this task. And this is the paste zero function. So within the paste zero function, we don't need to specify any separator because by default, the paste zero function is using an empty character string as separator. So if you run line nine of the code, you can see that the output is exactly the same as in the previous example. However, this time we have used the paste zero function instead of the paste function. So in the previous examples, I have explained how to concatenate several character string inputs. However, we can also concatenate vector objects containing several character strings in this vector. And for this, we first need to create an example vector as you can see in line 11 of the code. So after running this line of code, you can see at the top right of our studio that a new vector object is appearing, which is called X. And this vector object contains several different character strings. So if we would apply the paste function to this vector object, you can see that our vector is returned once again as a vector. So we have not merged all the character strings in our vector yet. So if we want to merge the elements of a vector object, we need to specify the collapse argument, as you can see in line 15 of the code. And within the collapse argument, we need to specify another character string as separator. So in this case, I'm merging our vector elements based on a blank value. So if you run line 15 of the code, you can see that another character string is returned. And this time we have merged all the elements in our vector. So at this point, we have only one character string, which is showing the sentence, another example with a vector. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.